Yeah, hello everyone. I'm so excited to show you um, the actual prototype of Unlearnity that I created over the last weeks um, inside Webflow. And um, yeah, so just into uh, in a short description for those who never heard about Unlearnity. Um, what Unlearnity should be is the central access, so the central page to find all the educational and inspirational content. Let it be talks from TED in this example, let it be a documentary, a book, or a meetup, or a conference. Um, all these things, having all these kind of uh, content um, in one place and combining them, connecting them. So that's really the key thing. And um, I will come back to that later, but um, first of all, I want to show you what NLT looks like in the actual prototype. So what you see now is um, the actual prototype from NLT on the iPhone 4S. And the reason is this, that um, it's really about designing um, uh, the website for small devices first. So, I mean, well, maybe you heard about this mobile first context, but um, the idea is really that if you design a website from the ground up, from the wireframe to the design to the actual prototype, if you have always the smallest devices in mind and design for the smallest smartphones, in this example a 4 inch uh, iPhone 4 um, or 4S, um, then you not only are a kind of forced to minimalize the structure to make it more simple more easier, uh, easier to use, but also more simple. Concentrate on less buttons and less functionality. Um, that also, uh, the, on the one hand, it allows you to create an interface that's easy to use on a small screen. But a great thing is also that if you go to bigger screens, um, you're not uh, completely overloaded, visually overloaded with all these different elements. And you really have the same interface structure on all devices. This is really the key thing and if you want to do that, if you want to have an interface that's the same on every device, let it be a smartphone, let it be an iMac, uh, a huge 70, uh, 27 inch uh, screen, if you want to have always the basically the same interface, you really need to start at the smallest devices because otherwise if you go from the biggest devices um, to the smallest ones, um, you, um, good luck, let's say it this way, um, you, then you, um, automatically become, uh, will come to pop down menus and a structure that's completely different than on the desktop version because you have to restructure everything and all that stuff. So, um, design for the smallest devices first and that's the reason why you also, um, see the wireframe and the design and all the communication, um, from Unlearnity, you'll always see um, the smartphone version. Why? Well, because that's the um, design I was concentrating on first. But it's not the only thing. Uh, it's not the only device. But so let's start with the um, smartphone version. You can see now um, this is the kind of uh, structure you have on the search result. Um, what's important to have in mind is there are actually two important uh, kind of subs uh, of sites. The first is um, search result, and the second is search term, a, a kind of tag, so um, a topic, let's say. And um, the reason why I say this, and the reason why because uh, why this is important is, you see now um, the structure that's the same for every uh, search result is that on the left side, on the top, you have um, the source. So if there's just a single source. In this case, it's Ted. It can also be, for example, Arte, um, or it can be uh, whatever. Um, so if there's just one source, um, it will be displayed here, and I can directly access the search term, the subsite of um, the source. And I will show it to, uh, to you later. Um, and this, that's the same for the category. So in this case, it's a talk. Um, but also the category is just a tag, it's a search term. And that means you can also go to search term later on and find 
every talk, um, every category, uh, and every result uh, on in this category on LearnT by simply visiting the search term page talk. So, and the button, uh, this button um, is a kind of gambling button, um, is to um, later on um, make you make it possible to really explore unexpected content, content you really didn't have in mind. So this is uh, a really a random button, show me a random result. So really that you can explore content that you haven't, that you never had in your mind. And maybe you'll find it interesting and you will stop and see and, well, that looks interesting. I will, I want to look more, I want to know more about this. And when we say, well, I want to know more about this, um, this is really where the whole structure comes in mind. Um, um, yeah, so when you visit a search result, you can directly see, okay, this is a talk, it's from TED, so this is a TED talk, um, and the person who, um, who gives this TED talk is Ken Robinson, so that's a sub-headline, and the main headline, so the title of the talk from Ken Robinson, How to Escape Education's Death Valley. Um, so later on you will be able to also uh, directly see the votings, uh, the upvotes and the downvotes. So you don't have this kind of star uh, system with weighted with one star or five stars. Where you really have to think about and hmm, should I give it five stars or maybe four stars? Hmm, or maybe three stars. Um, so it's, the more simple you make waiting, the more willed people will be to wait actually something. Uh, so this is um, the kind of upvote and downvote system you kind of seen on Reddit, for example, um, but it's still quite a little bit different. So you can uh, give multiple upvotes, multiple downvo uh, downvotes, of course, with a limit to prevent spam. Um, but it's not just about giving one upvote, because maybe you really love a content, it's really blowing up your mind and you that should make a difference for you um, uh, for voting so you, so you should be able to give more votes to really a content that you really love so let's say five upvotes um, instead of content that you see that you have seen and say okay it's nice yes give it an upvote one upvote not five um, so just press one time or press five times because you like it so much so um, the saying that all search results have in common is really the ability to find out what this is all about directly. So really in a short time. And for this you directly have um, the search terms um, that are related to this topic directly listed here. And if you want to uh, view more of them, you can click on the button and you will go uh, scroll the, all the way down to all search terms, which we come later on to. And um, so yeah, but in this case, okay, I want to get more details, right? I want to, I mean, the search terms are nice. It gives me an overview about what this is basically uh, in what direction this goes, but I want to have more. I want to have more details. So let's go to um, the explore button. And I scrolled and it scrolled down. It means so, okay, here I'm now um, still at the search result. I have now the ability to upvote and downvote if I already um, uh, have seen the content. And the idea is um, this is something that's still in development. As you see, it's a placeholder. The idea is that in this area, you have the most relevant metadata. Um, for every search result, and that's different for every category. So if you are um, if we are talking about the talk, um, that might be who gives the talk. Um, if we are talking about an event, that might be uh, the place of the event or the time, the date, when is the event. So the most relevant metadata, um, directly accessible in just in always the same field. Um, but it's something we really have to uh, think about um, more. Um, what you probably recognize is um, that normally when you go on uh, an iPhone um, and you scroll down in Safari, um, the, t uh, the bottom um, Safari uh, bottom bar will uh, go away and the uh, uh, 
and the bar at the top will be smaller, what means that it will be even more space. So this is really uh, pretty pretty pessimistic. Um, that's the start version, yes. That's the way it looks on iPhone 4S when you open the site. When you scroll down, this will go away and you have even more space. So scroll down, I have the description here because I want to have even more details. The metadata are oh, nice and important. But I also want to have the description. I want to know what this is all about. Um, if I'm not completely sure if I want to see the talk. And then I come to the search terms. And here I'm not limited to uh, how many search terms can be displayed by side, but I can see all search terms. So as a standard, there will be displayed three or on a larger screen, six. And I can see, okay, this is about Ken Robinson. Um, it's about education, it's about individuality. And I want to see more and I can see, okay, it's about creativity, it's about children, it's about school, conditions. Oh, well, that sounds nice. And before I pay attention to the comment section, I actually want to watch the talk. So this is what I do. I press watch talk. So this is the kind of call to action. And I can directly see the embedded video. So this is basically um, how a single search, si um, search result looks like. You have um, the sources. By the way, if there are multiple sources, what very often is the case, for example, documentaries often are available on Netflix, Amazon, iTunes, and so on. So if there are multiple sources, this button should not be displayed because you don't want to highlight just one of the sources. Um, but if there's just one source, of course, we will display the source and a direct link to actually see the side of the source the tag side, the search term side. So um, so that's true for every category. Here's always the category, let it be a documentary, let it be a book, let it be a meetup or whatever. And here you have the headline, you have the weightings, and there you have the call to action. So it's what's important is that you always, mm, well, I should say different, the main thing about the LearnT is the accessibility of the content. We don't want to take the content. We don't want to make the content accessible, even more accessible. And to do that, it's really all about making it as easy and as fast accessible as possible. And this largely visible screen, uh, this the button, um, is really important. So the call to action depends on the category. So if this uh, uh, for example, for the category talk, if there's just a single source and if the source is embedded, I can directly watch the talk. If this would be an event, for example, um, that I can uh, participate, I participate, whatever, um, I can directly uh, participate uh, on the event uh, using the button here. I can join the event right here with the call to action. Or let's see, um, let's say I have multiple sources, then I can see the multiple sources. I can let me show, um, let's show the actual um, sources. So yeah, so that's the structure. I can share the result with, um, for example, on social media. I can save the result for later. That will be possible. Yes, and the notification functionality. One of the um, one of the most amazing functionalities on LearnT because it not only allows me when I'm on a single search result to get notified if there's a new, if there's something new about the content, for example, um, if there's a new comment or if there's, um, um, for example, a new source. But more, uh, more interesting, um, for when we talk about uh, lectures um, at universities, very often changes uh, when talking about the time or the date. The same things for meetups. Time has changed, the date has changed. You can get notified about that if you want. And you can also get notified for search, uh, for, for actual searches. So if you want to get notified if uh, um, there's a new search result available for your search, you can get notifications for that. 
but you can also get notifications if there is, for example, a new search result about Ken Robinson, or a new search result about education, or new search results from TED. And this really brings a... Um, you really get an idea of what the potential is. So, okay, this is how it looks like on a small screen. But now let's change the screen, and you see the difference, and it makes a huge difference. Um, by the way, in this case I just implemented Apple devices, but that's just for testing. Of course, this is a Nernty is mentioned to be just a website in the first um, in, uh, in the first step. It's, it's a website, it's a responsive website, and that means of course it runs perfectly on smartphones, tablet, notebooks, um, doesn't matter which uh, which system, which OS, which manufacturer. Um, if you're if you're on Android, that's great, and it works beautifully as well. Um, so, but you can see the difference between a small four-inch screen where you just can see up to everything to the main call to action to make them really able to directly watch the talk to actually do the thing you can do about uh, in this uh, with the search term. Or well, for example, you can directly see the button to uh, show all the sources from uh, for this documentary, for example, or to show all sources for the book, or to directly join the meetup. And on a small and, and on a bigger smartphone, <laughs> you have even way more. You have also the um, the search tags. You have the explore button. You can see okay, I'm now currently at a search result, but I also um, the section of additional search results, uh, which are manually selected if, also as optim optimal, this is nothing that will be always available. This will be available if someone manually selected content to say, okay, this is really um, additional to the content if the source, so really the person who added the content to a learnity. If this person says, well, there really has to be more content directly linked to that, highlighted. Um, and the recommended button is where later on you will be able to find all search results based on the tags and based on your favorites, based on what you watched, what you loved, what you are interested in, showing all the search results um, related to the current search results. But really based on your interest. So, for example, it would make sense. Well, I'm curious about education. I love education. Um, but I'm a really. Um, but I also love documentaries. I'm a big fan of documentaries. The combination of this graphical and audiovisual. But I'm not that a big fan of books. So of course it would make more sense to present me documentaries um, about education or maybe talks because also of talks. Than books, okay. So this is basically the whole idea, um, and this is what I'm what I'm talking about when I say individual accessibility. Um, the content from multiple sources is always basically the same, but it's about which content do you present, which content do you recommend, and so yeah. <clears throat> so this is what it looks like on an iPhone six, with a huge difference. Um, I can also tape the device. Um, by the way, um, what you currently see is uh, the prototype, uh, the, the tester I created also in Webflow. So um, all these interactions are created in Webflow and it's basically pretty simple. It's not that complex than it might seem. Um, if you want, you can also um, work on your own uh, on an earlier version of this uh, testing websites. Um, so simply go to uh, Webflow and search for website devices tester and there you will find a, um, a little bit earlier version but it basically has the same functionality. So continue. Um, so this is what it looks like on iPhone 6. Now we go to tablets. And really, I love working with tablets. I really love it to watch things on tablet because you have a relatively large screen, but still on a very small device. And you can see now 
instead of having just three, um, or having just one row of search terms, I have two rows. And this is really what I mean when saying, okay, this is um, responsive, it means, and, and really important, the structure is always the same. But it's also about really um, using the potential and um, using the ability of having a larger screen. So using the screen, the larger screen, in a good way, without breaking the user experience uh, that people are used to. So I can rotate it and I can now go to the MacBook version, so the notebook version. And now, um, just a slightly larger step, I go to a, I'll go to a huge 27 inch uh, all-in-one PC and use. So, so the structure is still the same, but it's still different. It's, um, it's not overloaded visually. Um, yeah, so you have the same structure. Um, so just imagine in the later um, in the later on you will also be able to directly see the current search terms uh, search results um, on a list displayed here on the left. The reason why I don't really want to show the search uh, search results list is because this is really about the search results and the search terms. Um, this is not about uh, the f search functionality because this is something still in development um, in very early stage. And but this is really the con uh, the whole concentration of this prototype is on the actual content, on the actual search results and search terms. But now let's take a look on how it uh, was created. Um, yeah, first of all, how it looks like an actual device. So this was in this uh, tester, in the tester website. And this is the actual website um, in Safari, in this case on a 12-inch MacBook. So really not a uh, high-power device. It's, um, yeah, but it works beautifully. I can um, watch the talk, I can start the talk, directly watch it because it's embedded in this case and of course if the content wouldn't be uh, is not embeddable uh, because it's just available external on one source and can directly access to one source or I can if there are multiple sources directly see all sources and I really love this talk so I really this is what I mean it's we really, I love this so much um, so I don't want to give just one thumbs up but really up to five thumbs up, for example. I can also spend money. Uh, so idea behind the spend money button um, is really for content that's not created by big companies, but really, really by single person. So this is a functionality that's um, interesting uh, in a later version when really more people are able to add new content to the site and um, make them make the content available for free, but also really to uh, <coughs> so really that um, the users can show I love that content not just by thumbs up, but also on a monetary base. I want to support the creator of the content. Um, that's the idea behind that. So um, yeah, I can now watch your talk, of course, if I want. But I can also click on the Add button. So this is an important functionality of Enlenti, but will be just a very, very, very early prototype. Remember that. This is not how Enlenti will finally look like. This is a prototype. And the idea is really that you um, not only are able to add new search results to Enlenti, but also on this way add things to the current search results. It can be tags, it can be a comment, it can be um, also private notes. Why not? I mean, when you watch something, you really want to also, you have so many ideas very often when watching the content. 
win a big weight if you have directly a way to also create uh, nodes um, on this talk, for example, and always continue to uh, continue writing so that I can say, uh, can write down, uh, okay, he's now talking about Los Angeles. Not sure if this is written right. Um, I just close the button, I can continue watching. I moved to America 12 years ago uh, with my wife, Terry, and our two kids. Actually, and yeah, we can see Los Angeles. The idea is... Thinking we were moving to America. But yeah. anyway, so the idea uh, is that you really it's, can also it's uh, continue plane, right? writing notes while watching the content. To America. Um, I got here 12 years ago, and when I All got comments. here, I was told various things, like Americans don't get irony. <laughs> Have you come across this idea? It's not true. I've traveled the whole length and breadth of this country. I have found no evidence that Americans don't get irony. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> watch this talk. It's one, really great. Um, a nice way of presenting something. Um, so yeah, this is the way how the actual prototype looks like. And now, here comes the, <laughs> the switch to Airflow. Um, so just to give you a quick look on how it looks like, in Webflow, in the actual editor where I created a website. So um, this is currently Webflow and um, yeah, what you see now is the site, the results template and this is really part of the Webflow CMS, what's really interesting and this is just the early beginning. There's a lot of functionality um, that Webflow will be implement soon and of course, Webflow is not a tool for creating Ho and Learnity, how it will be in some years. Absolutely not. This is really where um, this goes beyond the limits of Webflow, where Webflow makes sense. But Webflow is really amazing if you want to create um, not just a blog, but also go beyond the blog and create more complex sites, like, for example, a prototype um, of a more complex sites. It, it's really is great for doing that as well. And the great thing is you can use that code. You can use that CMS and HTML code for the real product. And you don't have to write everything again from the ground up. So this is um, makes a huge difference in development as well. And you can see now, okay, here I have um, the description block. Um, I have uh, the dynamic list. I can see I can see a way automatically um, inside the dynamic list um, special uh, tags will be displayed and it works by um, using reference and multi-reference fields and you can see they're basically just really two collections. Okay, I have the second collection that's a tag category selection. Um, so what makes sense because the idea is that you not only have tags, um, but also um, seeing a difference between having um, person, or if it's, about, if it's about a person, if the tag is about a person, if the tag is a place, if the tag is really just a tag and a topic, or if it's really more than that. But the main thing are really tags and results. And you can see I already created quite some results. Um, for testing purposes um, and of course quite some tags so really topics from um, uh, from companies to topics to persons um, to places all the stuff so this is what it looks like in Webflow I can typically um, test it if I want and I can test it on a desktop size, on tablet size, I can also resize my website here and of course also sm a smartphone um, yeah and yep even for really really small smartphones and this is amazing I mean come on do you 
<laughs> having a website working on such a small screen um i mean is i wouldn't recommend to use it on that small screen but it still is usable um <laughs> yeah um so much about that and yes yeah, so you can you can see um and this is what it, what it looks like in webflow and now i want to give you an overview about what it's the main purpose what's the main thing that really matters most um on learning and that's the ability to explore content and not just find by um, using a specific uh, by using a specific search, but really how to explore content. And I want to give you an example of a story. So uh, some days ago, um, I wanted to watch uh, something uh, on Netflix, a documentary, and I was looking for new stuff on Netflix. So there's the site called so What's New on Netflix because Netflix actually doesn't seems to have. Um, a category where content that's new is listed, um, uh, but really you have to go to other to other sites. And so by accident, so not by willingly want want to find something about a special topic, I found uh, a documentary slingshot that's also available on Netflix. And I said, I said, okay, let's watch it. And it's really a wonderful documentary. And the interesting thing for me is I never heard about the documentary. I never heard about the topic inside the documentary. And I really um, explored. Um, so the documentary is about the story of Dean Kamen. Dean Kamen, an inventor who is most famous for the Segway. But also um, is was developing and working on um, a water cleaning system. And that's really where the movie is all about. It's about this water cleaning system. And in combination with the life of the inventor, Dean Kamen. But the fun fact is, I really never heard about Dean Kamen. And really, so by accident, I explored, uh, I explored the content, the documentary. And from this documentary, I started um, informing myself about, okay, who's this Damon, uh, Dean, da Dean Kamen? And this is really what Unlearned is all about. You can directly see, okay, he's it's a, it's a person, of course, uh, obviously. Uh, he's called Keen Damon. The idea is that here, what doesn't work now, so no, these tags are not related to the person. These are actual the latest tags I added to Unlearned. But the idea is that here now have the, late, uh, the tags that are related to this person. In this case, inventor, segway, water cleaning, something like this. And so that you really can get the feeling of okay, what what's this person doing, or what's this place most famous for, or what's this company is doing, what's the company is uh, producing, for example. And I can scroll down. I can see directly a short um, um, a short version of the Wikipedia article, and really it shows me okay, he's an American entrepreneur and and inventor. And okay, he tended to watch just a polytech. Oh, holy shit, that's a name. Um, so pretty interesting. And if I want to know more about this, I could really click on an article and directly see the Wikipedia article. And but currently, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is go to search results. And now, so this is really, really basic. Currently, there's no filter functionality. There's no, um, so there's basically. This is a really early prototype, but already now you can see now um, that on search results, all search results with Dean Kamen tagged are displayed, and this is the reason why I show this is when I watch Slingshot and I start to inform myself about Dean Kamen, I also recognize. Okay, he also gave uh, he also gave a TED talk, so I watched a TED talk, and it's really also really inspiring TED talk and um, about inventions and uh, um, the emotions when you work with people who really have um, 
I'm not sure of how I just should describe it. So really watch the talk and you will know it, uh, you will see it. So maybe it's not the best TED talk I've ever seen, but it's really interesting to uh, to learn more about the topic, about the person, to inform yourself, to explore. It shouldn't, yeah. So it's all about exploring, and I. So the idea is really that you start with, for example, a doc, uh, with Netflix. You see, okay, Netflix, they have a new documentary, so I go to that, and and um, of course, when you uh, so this in this case, this is a, docu a documentary. It has multiple sources. So first of all, okay, I see the topics. Now I want to see the trailer to make. <laughs> As a kid, I thought, I'm going to have a house where I can get up in the morning and open up a giant glass wall and take a helicopter out of my house and go any place I want to go. From a very early age, I both wanted to know more and more about the rules by which this universe of ours operates. And through the world of engineering, I wanted to start applying those rules to create inventions that would give people a better quality of life if those inventions work. What do inventors do? Inventors look at problems, but see them differently. I like projects where you can't use linear thinking. You have to take a big intellectual leap. So yeah, it's... Um so we'll, I, I, I became an, uh, so we'll get an idea because of the trailer. I know I say, okay, I go beyond just the trailer. I want to see the movie. I want to see the documentary. And I click on show sources and it really directly displays me all sources. In this, okay, in this case, just for demonstration purposes, just two sources, Netflix and iTunes. But I can directly click on Netflix and go directly to the search results and watch it within seconds. So I don't have to search on Netflix, just click on the Netflix link, click on play, and that's it. Depending on your internet connection, actually. Ah, funny. Okay, because I'm currently recording, Netflix doesn't want to record. Of course, they don't. So, uh, so yes, this is how it looks like when you explore content. And as I said, okay, I want to know, maybe go to Netflix. I want to uh, find more about Netflix. Um, I can see all movies which are available on Netflix. And I see, okay, um, all food ink. I, I heard about that. Um, it's a nice documentary, right? Of course I heard about it because I added the content in this um, database, but anyway. So this is a documentary that's really about the production of food. Um, it's about the fast food industry and how the impacts on the food industry and the industry and the food production. Um, really interesting and maybe for some people kind of shocking, but otherwise not really surprising. Um, and you can see, okay, this is about food, actually. And, well, I'm interested about food, so let's click on food. So no, uh, now I'm at the tag page of food. I have a Wikipedia description, also a Wikipedia link. I can discuss about food, love it. No. Um, and go to search results. And I see, oh, okay, Jamie Oliver, I heard about him. And I never knew he had a TED talk. Um, and okay, he's talking about teach every child about food. Um, so it's about Jamie Oliver, it's about fast food, food, health, education. And well, I'm, as I said, I'm interested in education. So let's go to education. Let's explore, explore further. Let's go to education. Again, go to search results. And here I have, okay, um, an update about Unlearnity, for example. So you can also use it for blog entries. That was the idea behind that. Um, what's about the last week tonight show? Um, this is the point where we come from education to inspiring. 
benefit from educational content uh, like video courses or books and uh, so on up to really inspiring uh, content because yes there is also content that's main purpose might be entertaining but really has such a great story to tell and such an important topic um, that it would be a shame to not present this uh, uh, this content on a learner team. So in this case, for example, it's about Last Week Tonight Show, and it's it's an episode of Last Week Tonight Show in this uh, in this case about sex education. So how uh, sexuality is uh, schooled inside schools in the U.S. Well, it's really uh, quite a strange topic. Um, yeah, the U.S. a country of um, extremes and positive and negative I would say um, so yeah I can see okay this is about John Oliver it's about sexuality I can go to sexuality uh, and again go to search results I see okay there's also again a TED talk <laughs> sex needs needs a new metaphor uh, metaphor here's one um, yes yeah, sex is like pizza interesting <laughs> Um, and let's go to education back again. So we really have this endless exploring. And so okay, this is a this is German talk actually from Ben Paul. Um, really great also. And now let's go to um okay Ben Paul. I heard about him. Um, let's go to the side of Ben Paul. And. It's really always the same structure. It's so simple to understand, but um, has has really so much, such a high potential. Um, so as I said, it can be used. Um, and learning it could be used for professionals and companies, but also for um, less professional created um, videos. Um, that doesn't have to mean the content isn't great. So, for example, this is a really nice behind-the-scenes video of the work of uh, Ben Paul. And uh, so, yeah, also very interesting. So, yeah, this is really the whole thing. Um, and now you can see it's uh, just to give you a quick look on um, what search results I already tested to create um, movies, inspiring movies as well, yes. That might be entertaining, but also can be really inspiring. In this case, Chappie, um, a great movie about artificial intelligence, and um, yeah, really great storytelling as well. Um, and so on. This is really so. Just to give you an idea, for example, um, Future Mag. A nice magazine from Arte, um, or in this case, um, a documentary, a series, a series of documentary about South Korea, from Arte. Um, also really interesting, um, about South Korea, the islands. In this case, um, there's also an episode about Seoul, uh, the city, in uh, South Korea. I can directly go to Arte. And see all the content that was created on uh, from Arte. And okay, there's also something about Larry Lessig, uh, Ted stories. Okay, I know, I heard about them. Let's go to the site. And oh, yeah, the Internet's on boy. It's also a nice example. So mostly you have documentaries external, but sometimes it's also possible to embed them because they're available on Netflix, on YouTube for free, wanted, uploaded by the creator, like this example. So I can not only watch the trailer. You know, it's easy sometimes to feel like you're powerless, like when you come out in the streets and you march and you yell and nobody hears you. But I'm here to tell you today, you are powerful. You can stop this bill. A co-founder of the social news and entertainment website Reddit has been found dead. And yeah, I can not only watch a trailer, 
but watch the whole movie directly. I mean, this is really the, um, the optimum that could be possible, that going from a preview to the actual content, like they... to the actual full content from the preview, and um, so really it may, might give you an idea. I think that's enough for today, and um, so really to get an overview of what it means if you have a single site where you can explore all the content um, from so many multiple size, uh, sites. So again, this is not, Illuminati is not competition uh, for other companies. Illuminati is not a competition for sites like Arte or TED. No, absolutely. It's really about making their content um, available or explorable on a whole new way. And um, if you want, if you make education explorable, you really completely change the understanding of education in people's mind. Um, so yeah, from interviews, um, blog entries, talks, documentaries, inspiring movies, um, meetups. Um, uh, there are also some amazing YouTube channels as well. And yeah, but also companies can use it as well. So if you're if you're a company that maybe don't have educational content directly, but maybe you have a software, maybe you're working, maybe you're creating a software. You um. So what about a webinar, for example, or a tutorial to really show people how to use your product, how to use your software? That's also a way how to use and learn to really make people educate themselves about web design, in this case about Webflow, and to really explore that, to explore the content, but to also to explore the company. Um, yeah, and that's the same thing for also for persons. Um, if you're a single person, you can also um, add your own content. So in this case, I just try to, um, for test purposes, to add also uh, my uh, pretty unprofessional talks <laughs> I created some months ago. And um, again, click on the name, I can have <coughs> all search results directly available here. Um, yeah. So, I think that's enough now, and hopefully you really got an idea about what the potential of a learning can be when you have one place to explore content about educational, when you can explore educational, but also inspiring content from meetups to documentaries to behind the scenes videos to books to really all the stuff and make them connected, make them explorable. It's really a kind of endless exploring story. And so, with these words, hopefully uh, you enjoyed watching the video and um, even if it got a bit longer than I originally planned. <laughs> but um, hopefully you like it and uh, yeah. If you have if you have any questions about it, um, ask in the comments. And um, if you haven't watched the uh, blog entries um, about Unlearnty, and if you want to know more about Unlearnty, I just invite you to um, go to Medium, or I will also link the German, in this case, uh, blog entries about Unlearnty, where I will explain what happened the last months what actually is in Nernty, what's in the main center, this exploration and so really um, how it was created from the wireframe, including a video, um, after the design process and the actual prototype here in Webflow. Um, everything beyond, uh, about, wonder, uh, about that, um, of course, just the tip of the iceberg, really sh compared really short but um, so yeah, just take a look on that and I'm excited about your opinion and this reason uh, and yeah.
name in this sentence. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for your attention. Bye bye.